hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to carry on with part two of our wooden scale model feature. Well, last week on the show, I fulfilled a viewer's request by featuring some scale models, but I did not feature them all, uh, simply because the show was running on too long. So this week's show, we're going to continue with that, and it continues with the only model that I've ever made twice. Well, you heard me right. In all the models that I have ever made, this is the only one that I've done a second time. And that is Cherry Tree's motorcycle pattern, which is uh, pattern number 42-602. Now, I initially started this build years and years ago. I ordered this plan with great ambition to do it. And partway through, I got frustrated with it. And the reason I got frustrated was I couldn't just do it like the plan said. I had to go big or go home and I doubled all the measurements. That created all kinds of problems. Everything from pieces that were too thick to cut to where do you get the stock for this, etc., etc. And it ended up being such a frustration that I took all the pieces, put them in a box and stuck up on a shelf for two years. And that's where it sat for two years. And then at some point in time, I got tired of looking at that box and I thought, I've really got to get back to this model. And I started in at it. And this was at the point in time that I did not, I was not recording my hours. So I have no clue how long it took, but eventually it got finished. Fast forward years later, I decided that I would make my father one of these for, I believe it was for his birthday. And I pulled the plans out again and started making it the normal size, what it should be. And uh, what a fun build. What a fun build. 65 hours is what it took to make the little motorcycle. And the challenging parts of this thing, the chains, the, the brake discs, um, the spokes, the tires, the tires are so difficult. Well, not difficult. They're challenging. They're challenging to make because all of the species, the walnut, the maple, and then I did oak spokes, they have to all be exactly the same size so that they fit together properly. So you don't end up with gaps. Those gaps on a scale model really show. So you really got to be bang on the money here. Sanding outside of the line or sorry, cutting outside the line and then sanding up to it is your friend. Creep up on that measurement, test fit many times along the way and eventually you get a perfect fit. The hardest part about this entire build, the smaller one, was not breaking pieces because they're so darn small. This thing isn't much taller than a can of pop, which makes it... It makes it a challenge for bigger hands and for failing eyesight. So all in all, it all came together. It ended up taking a ribbon at the local fair. And, uh, well, you know what? It's just a load of fun and the results speak for themselves. Well, what do you say about Toys and Joys pattern number 104, the bucket truck? I say that it was 134 hours well spent. Why so long when I say that the average is around 90 hours? The bucket truck, much like the Jeep JKU build, was a little, uh, little more personal for me because I work in an industry that uses those trucks and I wanted to personalize it. So modifications went along where I didn't make a single bucket, I turned mine into a double. Um, I added things like custom grading across the back window, a hard hat. I added an entire wire rack onto the back deck like what we have in the trade or the industry along with wire. Um, there was tons of modifications in this. Custom hitches were put in. Even fuzzy dice in the windshield hanging off that rear view mirror. 
there was a ton of things changed here, a ton of things added, custom features in the cab that added up to 134 hours. This was a much earlier build for me and uh, even things like the ladders, making a custom little step ladder, uh, an A-frame ladder if you will, uh, just a challenge because of course it's not part of the pattern so all of that had to be figured out and scaled in such a way that it looked proper for the build. I actually ended up taking this one into work and some of the people in there were quite amazed at, uh, at how great it looked. I had one of the mechanics that used to weld up the wire racks say that it was copyright infringement because I had used his design. Well, of course I scaled it off the truck. But either way, it was a load of fun. And, and what I bring to you with this is don't be afraid to change the pattern. I made so many changes on this that by the time I was done, even so much as a little Mac decoration dog on the hood, I made so many changes to this that it really was a completely different model by the end of it. So don't be afraid to step up to the plate and add your own little features. There's nothing wrong with that and in fact it's encouraged. Make the model your own as I did with this one. Toys and Joys pattern number 110 is the Abrams tank and that my friends represented 102 hours. Um, I wanted this model to kind of represent what it was. And what I mean by that is I wanted to make it out of hard maple. And I have to tell you, this thing is solid as a rock and it weighs a ton. <laughs> it's pretty much solid maple right through. Um, biggest challenge on this, without a doubt, I sure, I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm gonna say, and it was the tracks. Making those tracks out of maple presented all kinds of issues uh, with the wood being harder. The most or the biggest issue was drilling it, getting everything to fit. <clears throat> it was also quite the challenge to get all of those wheels all the way around to be able to ride in that track and get the tank to run properly. So if any of you are wondering about these wooden tracks, they're not just for decoration, they're functional. They actually work. And it's a challenge to get them to work and run smoothly. And in order to do that, you need square drilling, square cuts. You need to be right on the money. Take your time and do it. Um, it takes two to three days just to make the tracks for this thing. And that doesn't include the assembly. So don't be in a rush. Now, this thing here, little extras like the barrels up in the top uh, storage section and my wife made me a couple little duffel bags and that sort of thing. But this thing is awesome. Uh, right up to the functioning turret that rotates all the way around, the gun that raises up and down. This thing is a heck of a lot of fun and it's really impressive. It doesn't look like much when you're looking at it as far as work. There's not that many small pieces, but what there is is a lot of crazy angles and in order to do it properly and to make it look right, you have to pay attention that everything is mounted or, or cut squarely. And it is those square cuts and those clean lines that make a successful model. If you start getting sloppy, uh, if, if you stand back at something and you've got a four foot gap between panels and one panel is a little bit off, you're not going to notice it. But if you get a scale model and you've got a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch between panels and it's just a little bit off, that sticks out like a sore thumb. So you really need to pay attention to your angles in order to, to get a, a successful and good looking model. And the side panels on this tank are a prime example of that. So either way, there you go, 102 hours. And uh, if I knew more about the military, I probably would have added more extras to it. Toys and Joys pattern number 92 is their fire truck pattern. And what a visually stunning project this is. The thing that makes it so stunning and so striking is wood selection. 
Um, I made this one almost completely out of walnut so that you get that darker color of the fire truck engine. And then I used maple uh, to pick up the accents of things like the ladder and that sort of thing and the gauges on the side of the truck. Just a load of fun. Just a ton of fun from start to finish. Very blocky build. Not so much of a challenge for shaping of pieces and that sort of thing, but you know what, honestly, at uh, 70 hours to make this one, it still presented the challenges, and one of the biggest challenges was the ladder. The ladder is functional. It both uh, raises, it rotates, and it extends. And when you're making things like this out of wood, especially on a smaller scale like this, it's quite a challenge to be able to get that to work. And you have to be precise in your measurements. If you're not precise, things don't work. Luckily, I was able to do it so that it works, but it took extra shaping. In other words, even though I made it and when I put it together, it was so tight it didn't slide. My measurements were too precise. So I ended up having to sand it down and take it down a little more to give me that wiggle room to allow it to work a little easier. Uh, I didn't want to be reefing and pulling on it trying to extend that ladder. Uh, you want it to, to, to roll smoothly. So that was one of the biggest challenges there. Not to mention, of course, my nemesis, the steering wheel. I honestly hate making steering wheels. It's the one part of every model that I don't enjoy and I actually dread. So I'm hoping that one of these days I'm gonna come up on a method that uh, will work for me and make it easier and more enjoyable. But for now, they're a pain in the butt and I don't like making them. So there you go. The fire truck, uh, just a wonderful project and 70 hours, as I've, as I've said before throughout this video, 70 hours well spent. Once again, toys and joys, pattern number 97, and that would be the Hummer. Uh, one of the larger vehicles that I've made as far as the actual girth of it. The scale seemed to be a little larger on this one than the normal projects, and that presented some challenges in the size of wood that you had to obtain in order to get it. There were some laminations that had to take place. Um, 133 hours to complete the Hummer, and <clears throat> I had an absolute blast with this one. Certain modifications like, well, the seats on the interior. I couldn't just make it out of normal one piece of or one species of wood. I had to laminate pieces together and give that kind of uh, racing stripe leather look to the seats. So that was a load of fun and it really worked out well. I, I was pleased with how that worked out. But as well, this was the first model where I decided to incorporate wooden hinges. This was the first one that I wanted the doors to be functional. Not just uh, a routed outline as most of these patterns, if not all of these patterns, call for. So the challenge was there to make the hinges. It worked. It worked and worked rather well. The doors are all functioning, they all work, and that gives you the opportunity to be able to open up and have a look inside and, and see those fancy custom leather chairs that are walnut and maple. Uh, other things that were added to this build uh, were things like the tire carrier I made just a little bit differently. Uh, in fact, I created it completely on my own because the original pattern just calls for that tire to be up in the roof rack. I didn't like that and decided I wanted an actual tire carrier on the back of the truck and that's what I added. Um, I did my own custom running boards that I preferred over the ones of the pattern and that's okay too. I mean, you can do whatever you like with them and customizing is half the fun. So there you go, the Hummer. 133 hours and, uh, you know, a, a, a much larger build than the other ones as far as its width and its girth, but a lot of fun to make. Well, this next model that I'd like to feature and bring to you is quite possibly one of the coolest looking, meanest looking, uh, 
most wicked looking models that I've made. Uh, and that is pattern number 116. That is the MRAP Cougar, also from Toys and Joys. This pattern, much like the Hummer, took 133 hours. No, I didn't plan it. It's just the way it worked out. This one here, this one was a crazy challenge. There was so many small parts that you really had to think about how to make. Things like the hood vents uh, on the top of the hood, the side vents on the sides of the driver's side of the hood, um, things like the ladder that goes up to the back, which are made out of tiny little dowels. They are, you know what, they are difficult to make. You've got to have a level of patience and you have to have a level of ingenuity in order to figure out how to glue them together properly. But once you figure them out, the results are absolutely incredible. Uh, tons of challenges on this one. A, a funny story, and I have to tell it, and I, if she watches this show, she's probably going to say, oh my goodness, I can't believe you said that. I'm not going to mention any names, but I entered this in the local fair, and when I made this model, I made the antenna that go onto the back and the front of the vehicle. I made them removable because I knew that at some point in time, being thin dowels like they are, something is going to get broken. And I expect that. That is going to happen. And this poor woman at the fair, after it was all said and done, and I went to pick up my entry, she went to hand it to me and she was kind of mortified because she had broken one of the antennas and she felt so bad about it. And, you know, she's just an adorable lady that I love seeing there every year at the fair. And the fact that she was so concerned because she broke a piece of dowel that I have like 200 more sitting in my shop, uh, it, it was adorable. It really was. So a funny little story about that one and, and how the whole uh, mishap with the antenna came about. Um, either way, this project here, you know, feel free to modify it as you wish. I posted this one online and I had a lot of people telling me, add a 50 cal to the top of it and all this stuff. Well, that's great, but you know what? I did, I like to know enough about the vehicle. If I'm going to add something, I like to have some knowledge in my head about that so that I can add a personal element to it and, and do it justice when I'm making it with wood. And unfortunately, I don't have enough military experience that I felt that I could make a 50 cal weapon for it and, and do it justice. So for that reason, I left it out. But you guys out there, if you're going to try this model, feel free to add as much as you can. It, it, there's loads of room on this thing for add-ons and extras. And I'm sure those of you with military and woodworking experience, you could go crazy with this model. This is a great one to build. And uh, from what I've seen of the photos of the real McCoys of these, it's, it's a pretty darn good replica. So there you go, 133 hours for the MRAP Cougar. Toys and Joys patterns number 74, 80, and 85 uh, have, have a special place for me. And initially, my dad got me these patterns um, because he knew that I liked them and, and, and wanted to see me make them. And sadly, uh, five years ago, he left us. Um, he's no longer with us. Uh, and, and you know, it bugs me that he never got to see this build. This is actually my most recent build and it has been going on for 145 hours. I still have the caboose to make. So um, hopefully soon this build will be done. But again, I'm adding extras to it, and in my case, I made two passenger cars instead of one. And I added such extra features like, well, the coal car. The homemade coal made with spray foam and then the coal made in the wood stove, that whole experimental process, gluing it in place and forming it, that was a blast. What a load of fun. Uh, I have a lot of things planned for this build. Um, my wife even made this little hobo. We named him Don. <laughs> and uh, he's going to live in the boxcar. He's just adorable. He's done with a process called needle felting. But 
a load of fun on this. I'm hoping to make extra things and uh, like a track, maybe a trellis bridge and a custom shelf that will house the entire train, which all in all is going to end up to be just under nine feet long. There's still way more to go on this. Uh, the challenges are, well, you know what, let's just point out one, one big challenge was the roof of the passenger cars. I know it doesn't look like much, but the hollowing out of that roof is really something spectacular. And, uh, if, if you're interested in seeing pictures of the build, you should visit over at my channel's Facebook page. Um, all of the stuff that doesn't make it on the show gets over there. And this build is no exception that gets placed on there as well. My absolute favorite part of this build is the train emblems, uh, and they are on the engine, on the front of the, of the boiler, and on the sides, and uh, that would be the vinyl that I attached on there, and, and not too many people know, but that T43 uh, is a tribute to my dad, um, with of course his initials and year of birth. Uh, so guys, if you're interested in seeing the end of this or the this build come to fruition and finally get completed, uh, really, check out the channel's Facebook page and uh, hopefully you'll like what you see. Well, the last model that I want to feature here for you today is one of the more simple ones that I've done and that is Toys and Joys pattern number 86 of their bi-wing plane. And... Guys, this one here was only 30 hours, but there were still challenges involved. The reason that it was so few hours is because the planes back then, there really wasn't that much to them. They had a shell, an engine, and some wheels. What else was there? But it still was not without challenges, and the biggest challenge to make on this was trying to get the landing gear and the landing assembly drilled in at the proper angles. And truth be told, it ended up to be a total nightmare. The, the holes were all out of whack. The landing gear didn't sit right. I ended up having to re-drill it and fill holes. And uh, don't turn that plane upside down. You won't like what you see underneath. You'll think, oh my goodness, who made this? But the bottom line here is that even at 30 hours and a simple project, you have no idea the satisfaction you get out of making something like this. And uh, I didn't add any decals or anything to it. I didn't have the ability to do that at that point in time. But who knows? Now, in the days of cutting vinyl and applications of vinyl, maybe I will add some things to it just to spruce that model up a bit and make it look a little better. This model actually hangs from the rec room of my, or the ceiling of my rec room downstairs and being made out of poplar, it's a lightweight project, but it really is a, a, an eye catcher and it really does look great. So there you go, pattern number 86, 30 hours in for the biplane. And there you have it my scale model builds. Guys, over the past two Tuesday shows, I have shown you models that I have created over the years that represent a total of 1,870 hours of woodworking mayhem. But oh my gosh, what a great time. If you haven't had the opportunity to try one of these models yet, I urge you to give it a try. I really do. Um, being able to look at a plan and work out the problems and figure out how to make pieces that are a little more difficult is one of the most satisfying things in, in woodworking. Being able to problem solve and then through that you learn something. The more models you do, the easier they get. You remember those processes. The jigs that you make to cut smaller pieces, the jigs that you make to make tires and to cut the treads in tires and that sort of thing. It all comes together with each progressive model that you make to build your skill level to, to a level that makes it so that it's no longer so much of a challenge as it is you're there for self 
satisfaction. Just making it makes you happy. And that's what we're all striving for, isn't it? Just to be a little happier. Guys, I'm going to post the link to all of these, just like I did last week's show. I'm going to post the link to all of the patterns down below. Um, if you're interested in trying to obtain your own pattern or you want to make your own version of one of these, feel free to click the links and, and uh, find those patterns. As well, I'm going to post the link to the Facebook page. And as I said, a lot of the things that don't make it here on the show do make it over there on the Facebook page. And uh, there's, there's quite a lot, and the model builds are one of them. I hope you've enjoyed today's show, guys. This is the last part of a two-part series. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I've had a lot of fun bringing this one to you. Thank you so much for requesting it. Uh, I hope that I've, I've done it justice, and I hope you've enjoyed the show as well. I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.